Jesus interacting with the Pharisees. These are some of my favorite parts of the Gospels. Why was Jesus really condemning them? And why did the Pharisees hate Jesus so much? Hey, what's up? I'm Brad Large. This is my channel, Reclaim Reformation, where we strive to reform our vocations, our families, and our churches for the glory of God. I think we often oversimplify what's happening with Jesus and the Pharisees. We're quick to lump all the Pharisees together and come up with a simple Sunday school answer to why they hated Jesus. But first off, not all Pharisees did hate Jesus. So there's that. Not all Pharisees were bad guys. Some, in fact, thought Jesus was onto something, like Nicodemus in John 19. And there's plenty of evidence historically that the Pharisees were well-liked and popular guys, like a blue-collar preacher in a local church. Also, even while condemning the Pharisees for their hypocrisy and hard hearts, he commended the fact that they were striving to uphold the law and even praised them as a standard of righteousness in Matthew 5.20. So how do people respond when they're lumped into a group and, and then accused of something? Well, the bad people in the group respond badly. They reject the truth of the accusations or say something like, that's not fair. But the good people in the group respond differently. They evaluate whether or not they're in fact hypocrites or bad people. And if there are hypocrites in their group, they're, they probably aren't too happy about it either. So they basically acknowledge that while it might be uncomfortable, the generalization might have some merit. When we're confronted with an uncomfortable assessment, we can have a knee-jerk reaction to say, no way, that doesn't apply to me. Or we can say, that's kind of a fair assessment and I need to learn from this. As John MacArthur has said, hard preaching makes soft hearts and soft preaching makes hard hearts. So I saw a blog post Pastor Doug Wilson wrote some years ago, and it really helped me clarify what the Pharisees were doing to be so, you know, pharisaical. And he basically lays out four points. And the first is, comes from Luke 18, 9, where the Pharisees have contempt for others. Jesus uses the example of a Pharisee praying aloud for the adoration of those around him and comparing that to a tax collector humbly praying before God. And a big problem with having contempt for others is that it's hard to overcome the fact that you think Jesus is for everyone except yourself. I mean, Jesus also chided them for their superficial views of forgiveness in Luke 7, 47. It's kind of an easy formula. People that are loving understand forgiveness because they've been forgiven by God. And it's so simple, but it becomes a vicious cycle. We don't acknowledge what God calls sin, so we don't ask for forgiveness. We don't ask for forgiveness or recognize our need for it, so we don't confess. And because we don't confess, we deny our need for forgiveness, all of which gives us the false impression, intentionally or not, that we don't need forgiveness, which leads to us being inept and unable to forgive others. The third thing is Pharisees wanted things to be fair. Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16, the Pharisees think they understand what fair is because of their perspective, but they miss the mark completely. Uh, We can't compare ourselves to others and expect for things to seem fair. In fact, complaining about the lot God gives us is one of the highest forms of contempt for God's sovereign plan for us. It is a ridiculous charge that we lay against a sovereign God. What you are actually doing when you complain is saying that you don't think God should be in charge, but rather that you would like to be in charge. Complaining is a form of blasphemy, of saying, I don't like the life you've given me, God, and I could probably do it better. I want you to try to stop complaining. And I know that sounds impossible. Finally, the last example is Pharisees are unteachable in Matthew 21. Jesus uses the parable of the tenants in a vineyard to show how the Pharisees acted when God sent someone to set them straight. They didn't want to recognize the true owner of the vineyard. They wanted to pretend to be the owner, and it didn't work out well for them. So we see that Jesus was not yelling at the Pharisees about how they wanted to uphold the law, but rather their legalism. Jesus was not preaching against the Pharisees for upholding the law, but rather for them not upholding the law. The Pharisees and Sadducees knew the law better than any of the common people, and despite all that knowledge, they still weren't applying it properly. After all that, we can finally see what the hypocrisy of the Pharisees was. They were demanding other people follow every letter of the law, knowing full well they couldn't uphold the law either. Instead of being compassionate and helpful, they were legalistic and contemptuous. The hypocrisy of the Pharisees is our hypocrisy today. We want to tell people that they need Jesus, but... We want to leave out the part of the law that he came to fulfill. We want to show people we're the most loving, but we adopt the definition of love that the world's made up. We have to be good enough Christians. We have to be good enough Christians to empathize with women who want to murder their babies or men who want to be lazy. 
not take care of their families. We as Christians are decrying the way the world's falling apart and are not lifting our fingers to do the simple things it takes to turn it around in our vocations and our lives and our families and our churches. The Pharisees ultimately hated Jesus because his light as the Son of God illuminated their sin and hypocrisy, and they rejected God Almighty for a cheap, impotent substitute of legalism.